As hikers, one of the things that we tend to forget about when it comes to training is working the upper body. And this becomes more important when you carry heavier loads or when you do longer days, you might find that the small but important muscles in your back get really fatigued and you get kind of an achy back after long days on trail. So in this video, I'm sharing a follow along routine that you can do to train those small but important muscles. This is all basic body weight stuff, great for beginners, you won't need any equipment. Let's get into it. So whilst it's all well and good to be building a strong back using pull-ups and rows, those exercises you already know and do are probably only serving to strengthen the muscles that are already strong. So in this routine, we're gonna go through some exercises that are maybe a little bit different, something you haven't seen before, so we can try and get those smaller, weaker muscles activated and working and supporting your hiking. All right, let's get into our first movement, which is just a, a little warm up. We're gonna float the knees off the floor here, keeping the knees directly below the hips and just pressing the hands slightly into the ground with a nice straight elbow. If you like you can arch your back here a little bit more just make sure that that elbow stays perfectly straight and you're comfortable on your wrists. We're going to stay here for another couple of seconds. All right we can come out of that movement shake it out and prepare for a slightly harder variation and here we're going to actually arch the back fully now, aiming to draw the shoulder blades around the body, pressing the hands actively into the floor. And I'm holding this position for around 15 seconds. Okay, now that we've done some protraction, now we're gonna move into retraction of the shoulder blade. And our next movement is called the WLYT. The reason why it's called that is because we're going to create the shape of each letter, starting with the W. So with elbow bent, thumb pointing up, we're going to retract the shoulder blade back and try and pull the fist off the ground as far as possible. So we're gonna do five or six reps there, hold for a second or two on the last rep, and then move into the next letter. In this case, it's gonna be L. The elbow now is at a 90 degree angle from the shoulder, and we're doing the same thing, retracting the shoulder blades, trying to keep the shoulder depressed so we don't have the shoulder blades pointing up towards our ears. We wanna keep them down in all of the variations of this movement. Next, we move into the Y. So really important to keep the elbow straight now. Still got the thumb pointing up and I'm trying to pull the fist as far as I can off the ground. But it's important that we lead from the shoulder here. This is not an arm movement, it's an upper back movement. So try and initiate the movement from the shoulder blade. Finally, we come into the T, and this is a very similar variation to the Y, just with the fists coming directly out at a 90 degree angle from the shoulder. And again, we're gonna pull the shoulder blade back, following through with the arm and the fist, coming as high as you can, squeezing the shoulder blades together at the top of the movement. And on the last rep, we can hold for a few seconds just to build some isometric strength. Okay, we're gonna flip over this time onto your back and we're gonna get into floor slides. So here, we're really working on the connection between the shoulder blade, the rib cage, and the thoracic spine. So the aim here is to keep as much contact with the arms and the floor as possible. So we're bending the elbow and bringing the elbow towards the rib cage. It's important that the lower back remains flat on the ground the entire time, as well as the shoulder, the elbow. In fact, all of the upper body should remain in contact with the floor. Pay close attention to where you feel the body raised off the ground. That will be a good indication as to where you might be experiencing some tightness or some weakness in your upper back. Breathe out as you bring your elbows close towards your ribs and breathe in as you slide up your hands overhead. All 
All right, now we're gonna move into a half dead bug. So bring the knees directly above the hips. And here, our aim again is to keep the ribs tucked, keeping that lower back flat on the floor whilst moving the shoulder through an overhead range of motion. So keeping that elbow locked out and the rib cage tucked as you raise and lower the arms. And again, with all these movements, we wanna create space for the head and neck. So try and prevent your shoulder blades elevating and coming up towards your ears. You wanna keep the shoulder blades back and down through this and all of the movements in this routine. On the final rep, we'll take a pause in this overhead position and really try and focus on pressing actively our fists into the ground while keeping those ribs tucked and pressing the lower back into the ground. Okay, we'll flip over into a prone position again and our next movement is going to be a scapular push-up performed on the knees. So this can be quite a difficult variation if you're not familiar with this movement from my other videos already. You might find it more useful to perform this on your knees and your hands, but the same cues apply. What we're looking for here is to retract and protract the shoulder blades whilst keeping the ribs tucked. So we want to prevent the rib cage opening spreading the shoulder blades out and around the body as we're pressing the arms or the hands into the floor. Okay, we're gonna go into another variation of the scapular push-up, but first we're gonna take a little stretch in an upward dog. So squeezing your butt, dropping your hips to the floor, rolling your shoulder blades back and down to get a nice stretch in the lower back here before we move into our second variation of the scap push-up. So this is a variation for those who have been working on this for a little bit longer, performing a scapular push-up on toes. So here we're going to do 10 reps, focusing on creating that nice round upper back as we press the elbow into the floor. And again, we're going to hold 10 seconds or so on the last rep. Finally, to round out this routine, we're just gonna do a little lat stretch in this child pose position. So we'll bring the hands up overhead, then move them out to the left, and then gripping the ground with your hands, you wanna send your shoulder and your rib cage in the opposite direction. And you should feel a really nice stretch from basically the bottom of your rib cage all the way up into the shoulder on the outside of the body there. Hold that for a few seconds, and then we'll switch over to the other side. So this is a nice stretch, but also an opportunity to take a little bit of rest before repeating this one or two times more. So even though this routine is designed with a beginner in mind, this is a really complex area of the body that we're working with here. The thoracic spine, the rib cage, the shoulder blade itself has like 17 muscles that connect to it. So this means that the details here really matter. So pay close attention to the cues I'm giving you and then spend the rest of the time aiming to execute the movement with as much control as possible. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little routine. I would recommend repeating it twice through and doing this two to three times a week to see some measurable and feelable results. You know, it's something like this, it's a very basic little routine. I pretty much use it as a warm up, but depending on where you're at and how much time you've got to actually train, something like this might be all you need to start building a really strong back. If you want to take it further, I would recommend checking out my programs Elements or Hike Strong. I would say starting with Elements is a good idea. That's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the summit.